be on the front of the Indo. The big political story today, the uh, deal, compromise deal on water charges. Kevin Doyle is group political editor of the Indo. He's on the line. Morning, Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Morning, Gert. How are you? Not too bad. Good. Um, this continuing long-running saga, um, uh, is this the end? Um, it's almost the end, because with water, it's never the end, it would seem. But um, it, yeah, after six and a half years, we're, we're, we're almost uh, there. Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil have done a deal, uh, which will now allow Simon Coveney to spend the next few weeks coming up with legislation that will essentially end water charges. Uh, for everybody except what they're saying is about 8% of the population who are using 32% of the domestic water supply. Um, and they're saying those 70,000 people will still be hit with fines or penalties or levies. That all has to be tidied up and sorted out precisely. But for the large majority of people, for the ordinary person, uh, water charges are dead. And it took 10 days or so of negotiations. Um, is it fair to say this is a U-turn by Fianna Fáil? It's a U-turn on a U-turn, um, not to get too complicated on it, but to, to explain what happened over the past 10 days um, kind of sums up where Irish politics is at to a large extent because about 10 days ago, Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil had done, in principle, uh, a deal uh, that looks very similar to the deal that was finally agreed last night. Um, but Fine Gael came in back into the meeting on Tuesday of last week and wanted a few changes to the language uh, done, they reckoned it needed to be a little bit tighter in order to, to avoid the EU cracking down and issuing us with, with massive fines. Uh, Fianna Fáil did not like that approach. They, they effectively threw the, the toys out of the pram completely um, and crossed the, the chamber to, to side with Sinn Féin, um, Paul Murphy, the Right to Water TDs, and things looked to be going in a completely different direction, right down to the point where Fianna Fáil, Fianna Fáil were saying they didn't even want water meters to be inserted into to newly built homes, which was a, a huge change of policy. Um, and you could argue, suggested that there was, this was far more to do with politics than principles. Uh, then yesterday, um, in a surprise move, the, the legal advice that seemed to be going in one direction completely flipped. Um, and suddenly Fianna Fáil felt they had to roll back in with the Fine Gael side of uh, side of things, the Fine Gael version of what's coming out here and at the end of this, 10 days later we're back where we started. A, a piece of political manoeuvring designed perhaps to avoid an election? A little bit of that. I, I, I do think there's an element here of, of everybody wants to pick out the winners and the losers in this of course and the, 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 the spectacle of Simon Coveney and Barry Cowan uh, going at it head to head has, has come up a few times since the, the formation of this, this uh, minority government. In theory, um, Fine Gael have won this one, despite what at the 10 days ago looked like a bad deal. The same deal now looks like a particularly good deal because of all that's happened in between in terms of the rows and how bad it could have been. Um, in the bigger picture, Fianna Fáil said they would end water charges, and in theory, uh, for 90% of houses they have. Um, so that, that's what they will cling to today to claim as their victory, is the fact that they went into the election saying water charges would end, and... For all, for all but the most wasteful of people they have. But, uh, in a sense, there is still a charge for those who do waste water, and the rest of us will have to pay through general taxation. Well, that's the, that's the other side of it, isn't it? Because water, the water doesn't come free either. So it will be paid for through general taxation. That's, that's for definite. Uh, they will ha how, how that happens will be effectively up to the government of the day, but Irish wa the government will become the customer of Irish water and pay for us uh, to get clean water through our taps. But of course, we will ultimately pay for that uh, through income tax and, and whatever other way through taxation. Um, the, the one in 10 houses, how that works is that they are saying that the average person uses 133 litres a day to be considered a waster, you have to go 70% above that. So 1.7 times, about 230 litres thereabouts, um, is the point where you become a waster. But all that will have to be worked out precisely uh, by Simon Coveney when he gets working on the legislation. And what about the European dimension to this, Kevin? Um, how is the EU going to take this? Well, that's the big question, and we may not know that for, for some time yet, but effectively... The EU have been watching this very, very closely. They were unhappy with the suspension of charges in the first place. Um, and that's what Fine Gael's row all along was. That there had to be enough in this 
to suggest that the polluter pays principle was being applied, to suggest that there was made efforts in Ireland to uh, have water conservation. The fact that they're getting the meters into new bills and the fact that there is a charge for some people, uh, I think will be what Simon Coveney will be telling the EU proves that we, we are in line with the, the regulations there. But ultimately, uh, it will be up to the EU Commission to decide whether they think there's enough in this or whether they decide to take a case against Ireland. We probably won't know that for some time yet. Uh, politically, for the last few years, this has been an enormous political hot potato. Is this the last of it now, do you think, or, or is there more in this story? There's probably one more act left in it, because when that legislation is brought forward by Simon Covey, um, I suspect we will see one last row between Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil over this one. Um, and then it'll be voted on in the Dáil, and hopefully it will, will be the end of it. Um, the, the one, I suppose, bit of good news out of all this is that uh, refunds are coming as part of this at some stage. Uh, you're not going to get a cheque in the post next week, but at some stage, probably later in the year, um, Irish Water will have to start issuing refunds. The Minister has to come up with a mechanism to, to make that happen as well as part of the deal. Uh, has this been an enormous political shambles? Uh, that's an understatement, I, I think, for, for what has gone on here. There has been so much political capital wasted on both sides. I mean, there's there, there, there are no real winners here, um, unless you want to argue that perhaps Paul Murphy, uh, whose November 2014 by-election win, changed the whole debate around this issue and pulled Sinn Féin and in turn Fianna Fáil um, over to the, to the idea of not having water charges. It, 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 to be honest, it, I, I was just thinking here, I come into work every day in Leicester House and I, the top story for I don't know how long at this stage on my news this every morning is latest on water charges row. So I don't know what I'm going to do this morning, uh, to be honest, Gareth, because uh, this has just taken up so much coffee, so much coverage, and in some ways it has perhaps hidden how little is actually going on in Leinster House at the minute uh, in, in new politics because there's been such a distraction around this. And of course they, they're heading off on their holidays now for a few weeks. What can we expect in the political term after Easter uh, between that and the summer recess? Well, I, I imagine quite quickly after we come back from Easter we will have uh, the debate starting around how exactly this legislation is formed. So that's why I said there's one act left to play in, in the water scenario. Uh, beyond that, I imagine the, the controversy around the Gardaí uh, is unlikely to be gone away at that stage. And then we're getting back into public sector pay, uh, I think will be the big issue heading towards, towards the summer. So there's still plenty to talk about, but who knows what comes between now and then. And uh, another column in, in your paper today uh, talks about the night watchman Doyle uh, needs a break and, and so do we. Is there still a sense in that not much is getting done? No, there, there, there isn't a whole lot getting done because anything that has to happen um, involves so much toing and froing between the parties. And I've heard ministers privately say they don't want to push forward anything too um, provocative or too extreme or, or, or too different because... The result is a big row with Fianna Fáil um, and a big row with the opposition. So the, the, there is, it's a, look, everything is just happening so slowly. Nobody wants an election, and that's the only thing that everybody can agree on in here. And so that's why the only thing that's really happening is not an election. Yeah, for the moment. But uh, who knows what's coming down the tracks, of course. Yeah, and, and that's it. We, we'll just have to watch and see. I mean, the country is still running. Uh, the economic forecasts are, are quite good, given what's happened in terms of Brexit in the background. Um, but I suppose you asked me what's, what's the next big thing after Easter. We go to April 29th and uh, that meeting in Brussels. Um, and Enda Kenny, of course, will represent us there. And then we'll move into a Fine Gael leadership competition uh, pretty soon after that, we imagine. So we won't be stuck for copy, that's for sure. OK, we'll, we'll talk again, I'm sure. Kevin Doyle, thanks for joining us. Uh, the group political editor there with the Irish Independent on the water charges. The continuing saga, and we'll have more on that. Stephen Donnelly will join us after the break.